It's a daily process. <laughs> Sean, thank you for your time. This is Sean Young, and you are with which organization? I'm a, an associate pastor at City Church Del Rio, and also a, what they call a river ministry missionary with the Texas Baptist. Awesome. Yeah. Very good, very good. I hear you are head of the logistics and operations and... We're working man. that a lot. Yes, it's uh, a, quite a process for sure. Okay, how many days or, or what? How, this, how, is, this is the eighth day here at this location. Okay. Yeah. Um, tell me your day. Tell me what's usually, going on. Usually we get here around 7 and uh, try to get that... Uh, with the overnight people that were left over from the night before, we tried the ones that have confirmed, uh, confirmed bus tickets for at, uh, at 8.15. We try to get them over to the bus station, which is, you know, uh, a couple miles from here, and try to get them situated on the bus, and, and then just get the ones that were left here overnight fed. And um, Where are they going when they get on that bus? Boy, they're going everywhere. Uh, uh, I would say in Texas, the biggest... Uh, city that's receiving people is Houston. Wow. Um, outside of Houston, we I haven't seen a lot of people going to Maryland, in California, Jersey, and Jersey, and New York, and a lot to Florida. I would say those top five, those states are the top ones. Yeah. So when they're when they're when they contact their families, uh, uh, they send them the, the resources to get that done. So. So when. <laughs> You're processing, this is a, I guess you call it a processing center? That yeah, we're like a transition center. Trans I think. A transition, it's okay. Like a, I mean, we do some, I guess, lack, lack of a generic word is just a process, but it's more of you know, just trying to uh, transition them from the holding to where they are right now here. I mean, they're free to go. I mean, they have to be in their in their uh, designed to, or designated location by the first Tuesday of, of the month, whether it be New Jersey, California, or whatever. But while they're here, just uh, it's more of a transition center, just uh, allowing them to get some uh, get some items that they might not have anymore, like shoes or shoestrings, or um, obviously really? just to get them fed, um, uh, get them some hygiene stuff, um, uh, toothpaste, toothbrush, soap. Wash top, washcloth. And, what and kind of length of journey have most of these people been on? How long has it taken them to travel? Because we've heard as short as about 14 days because a lot of them are catching the train or the bus or the truck or whatever. Most of them I'm hearing is about 30. About, about 30 month, days. About a month, yeah. And the majority of it walking or riding or? Um, a little bit of everything. Just wow. going from city to city and, and, and making the trek. I mean, I imagine they're. I didn't, I've never really just sat there and just broke down trying to figure out how they actually made it, but most of them are telling me about 30 days. But they're here. Yeah. yeah. And, they, and they're reporting, the, uh, the majority are reporting that they have family somewhere waiting for them? They have to. Yeah, they won't, they won't be released without that sponsor that's going to accept them and, 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 and pay for their uh, way to where they're going. So who is processing this on the sponsor side to see if they're a legitimate uh, connection for them? Is there anyone? No, not the, I mean, no, there's no really no process for that. It's just, uh, it's either a friend, mostly just relatives. It's, it's aunt, uncle, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, mother-in-law, father-in-law. I mean, some of them have already their wives or husbands already might be here. Um, so they're connecting possibly onto some people that just arrived maybe 30 days ahead of them, even. Well, it could be. I mean, possibility. Possibility. I mean, I think in these these situations, anything's possible. Yeah. I mean, the, the options are endless. <laughs> we broke away from your day. So you, those that stayed overnight, your the facility will hold um, what about a hundred maybe? No. Uh, it's more limited to around 50 to 60. 50 to 60? Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, the city is, um, um, they, they put us a rough number around 60, so that's okay. what we're trying to, we... Uh, I'm going to have you speak a little louder because we we've got people that came in. We value their partnership and we want to, you know, keep on working the way they, they ask us to work. So, How many churches are involved? Oh, I, I would say easily over 20. 
easily over 20. But this is a little teeny, more. this if is a little more. teeny tiny town, so more. 20 is yeah. a whole yeah. bunch. I've, I'm receiving phone calls from different churches around the states, and I'm sure Pastor Terry is by the same way. He's probably receiving phone calls from partner, partner church that's, that, you know, that's a nice thing. I mean, having this network of churches we've always worked with, and you know, they know the, the need, and they know what's going on, and, and they know uh, that we know that they're there for us in this time. So from what I understand, uh, different churches are kind of taking the responsibility for a day to do the food, uh, potentially, and the church itself is handling the cost yeah. of the food. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a... It's, it's, it's awesome to see that. I was telling someone the other day, I mean, I love it when the church can come together on a local level and, you know, bring a bunch of people together, whether it be children, wives, uh, um, everyone through the congregation that can come together and work on a project together that just brings the, their church closer together when they serve together. I mean, and, and I love it when I see kids, like, doing these little th little projects because it really teaches them how to serve and when they when they... Get to the right age, they'll be able to be out on mission. So, when someone arrives here, walk me through that process of how, and and are y'all coordinating with the government somehow for them to get there? They're getting bused here, mm -hmm. so who's providing the transportation? So, border patrol dr drops off directly to us. So, I receive phone calls on every load before they come here. So they typically come in uh, 15 passenger vans, so I receive a phone call saying we have 13 people coming because obviously each van has two dri a driver and, a, and, a, and a, a partner. So we receive 13 people um, and they'll call us and they'll give us heads up when they're coming um, and let us know plenty enough to, and, and I'm free to call them. And I just, before you guys came in here, I called them and tried to, tried to figure out uh, um, what their afternoon look like so I can be ready for when they do get here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have a really good communication um, going back and forth between Border Patrol and, and, and this center. So are these Border Patrol officers that are driving them, transporting them? Yes. So they're, not they're still in their custody until, yeah. they, until, they, until they hand them off. Until they come here. So these people basically are day 20 people that they're having to release. Yeah, I mean I've seen as early as Second day, yeah. Serious. Yeah, the ones that are coming in from McAllen maybe a little bit longer, but uh, seeing a lot of day twos. Are you getting people directly coming in here that are coming just across the border from Acuna? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean that's always been a problem. That's always that's always something that's been going on. Um, you know, they're coming. They're still coming daily and. But now we're also receiving from uh, other border patrol sectors that are trying to lighten their load because they're inundated over there. So they might be shifting some over this way to help with the processing. So in a day's time, roughly how many people are you processing or well, receiving? We started, you know, very light. We started out maybe 10 of 10 a day, but we've really gone from zero to 60 miles per hour in, you know, warp speed. <laughs> and we're up yesterday, I think we, we saw... We saw about 120 drop-offs here yesterday. Wow. Yeah, so it was a, it was a busy day. So, so do they, um, so they come in, and what's the process here? So we, in most cases, we'll, uh, we input their names on a sheet of paper. We try to, um, you know, mother and daughter, mother and son, whatever, and we just try to, and then we, uh, we call them up individually, and then we basically talk them through the processes of how we, our different travel arrangements, and we try to, um, and we try to figure out who their sponsor is, um, and then we get them a telephone, and we get them on, on phone with their, with their uh, sponsors. And then from there, the ball is just rolling. So whether the sponsor is going to send a money gram or the sponsor is going to buy a ticket directly to, to Greyhound or if the sponsor is going to buy a, a flight out of Del Rio, um, they can get that ball rolling. Wow. So they've got different options. And so depending on which way they're leaving determines which, and I guess y'all provide then the transportation to one of those three or however yes, many outlets. Yes, to, yes. So the churches will step up and they'll, they'll drive a, a 15 passenger van over to the different drop-offs and drop them off morning, afternoon. Um, 
yeah, so we try to take advantage as much as we can of the local transportation. Uh, the local transportation is pretty limited, but uh, uh, like for example, the Greyhounds, uh, they can only take out about 60 some per day. Um, so the flights are usually, you know, you can usually, there's 20 seats on a flight, but that's not for everyone. Yeah. Um, they try to, we use, lean heavily on a van service that's uh, local and try to get them to San Antonio as well through that. Wow, are any being just dropped off on the streets? Um, we, at first, yes. Um, but we, through communication with them, we are allevi alleviating that problem. Wow. Yeah, because that's, that's our goal. That's why we came together is we didn't want to, them dropped off on the streets. We wanted to serve our community by not allowing that to happen and, and, and so be there to fill that gap. 